and welcome back to the Amputee Angler. And today we are going to be reviewing the Waterwolf 2.0 underwater camera. Had it for a while now, I've used it in a couple of occasions. Not as many as I would like, but I've used it enough to get a good feel about it, talk about its look, its design, its quality of filming underwater, and the various uses that you can use of it. A couple of little problems that I found with it, and the rest of it and such like as you do on reviews. So let's get into it. So the Waterwolf 2.0 costs around £100, anywhere from £100 to £110. So for what it is, actually really good value for money, I think, for the price. You know, hard to find a decent underwater camera for that sort of money. I mean, GoPros, you know, you're looking at a few hundred quid for a decent GoPro. So uh, if underwater recording is your thing, value for money here in this. If you want one fast, I'll stick a link in the description for one from Amazon. I think it's about 107 quid, I think, but you obviously being Amazon, you're gonna get it quick. Um, waterproof down to 330 foot is what they say, or 100 meters if you're that way inclined, uh, which for here on the South Coast, Eastbourne, Brighton way, I'm not gonna encounter any depths that are well beyond that. So anyone in my locality, that's gonna be the same for you. Down Cornwall and up in Scotland, obviously it gets a bit deeper. And if you plan on taking it, taking it to Norway, stuff like that, then you're going to go beyond the depths. But for most people, this is going to be ideal. Designed for a number of uses, you can float fish it. Um, what a lot of other people do is they troll it. Uh, a lot of pike anglers, a lot of the footage you see from this is from pike anglers sticking it in front of their lures and you'll see a lot of pike footage. And I'll put a bit in here as well. Uh, so it works also for bass. If you do trolling for bass, this is going to get you some great footage, and that's certainly something that I'm looking to do. We just haven't had the weather this summer. Anyone here who uh, is uh, on the south coast, or in fact in the UK as a whole, in July 2023, the weather has just been horrendous. So although we have used it a few times now, we've got more to do with it. Uh, you can also put this down in the deep water on the sandbanks for turbot. I mean, if you're brave enough, you could even put it over or in wrecks, but obviously then comes the risk of losing it. But... The quality of this is really good as well. And I'm going to put some footage in again in a minute for you of some mullet that I filmed in the harbour. I was doing some mullet fishing and I actually managed to get some really good footage of some grey mullet feeding and actually on the hook as well. But we'll come into that when I talk about clarity and stuff later on. But yeah, 100, 110 pounds. And with that, you get the whole lot inside of it, uh, yeah, what it comes with. So let's have a look inside. That's the box it comes in, nice, compact and light as you would expect, being a small camera. But yeah, just simply pop off like this, and then you've got the bit inside of it. And you've got a nice little bit there in front. Um, there you go. So this is the camera housed in here, and you can just pop that out. Um, and then that gives you the camera. So this line is something I've added, but I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, and there you go. So that's the actual camera itself. You know, it does look like something else, but I assure you that it is a camera. So hand sort of held, I mean I've got big hands, but handheld sort of size, and that's what it looks like there. You also come with an attachment uh, that goes on the back of the camera, and I'll show you how to fit that in a minute. Um, a set of weights. Now you've got various different weights in there and a metal bar to help you pop the cap off. Um, but again, I'll demo that in a minute. This is just what comes with the camera. And then a set of instructions, that's pretty much it. That's all you really need from the camera, other than a memory card, but you can buy those little mini SD cards and I'll show you all that in a minute. And it tells you how to mount it. It's got a set of instructions. Uh, without wishing to insult anybody, it is pretty idiot proof. But there is a couple of bits that might catch you out because they did me. Um, and we'll talk about those in a second. But yeah, that's what it comes with. Um, and then the weights, they attach onto um, the little rubber bit, uh, which is on the side here of this. That's where the weights go. And we'll talk about that in a second. And uh, we'll come on to showing you how this all fits together. Okay, so let's talk about the bits inside the camera then. So the little red cap, that's just simply a lens cap, all right? Now, I know it speaks for itself, but when you're transiting or it's not in use, just put the lens cap on because you know how easy it is on boats or shore fishing, especially if you're climbing over rocks, bass fishing or whatever you're using it for, all right? That's a lens, it's a camera lens. Don't dink it into anything. Just put the lens cap on and that gives it a bit of protection. It's nice soft silicone, so it protects that lens cap, all right? Now, you've got the, uh, the little bit that fits onto the back of the camera. Now, this here is quite fiddly, and it took me a couple of goes just to work out how it was going on. Even though I read the instructions, I sort of rushed it a little bit. But once you've got it once, it's easy to work out. But basically, this little bar in here, it's a bit like a, a place spreader boom bar, and it moves up and down. But you've got like a little locking bit at the front, and you can pull that, and that exposes. I don't quite know how well the bar is going to show up, but yeah. That exposes the bar and you need to basically pull that up 
to be able to mount the camera because if it's down a little plastic shroud sort of comes over the uh the metal bar inside so to mount it you have to make sure that that's pulled up and that's also how you release it as well is that little plastic bit at the top it sort of slides out and that releases the bar there so hopefully you've seen that and then to attach it to the the camera itself you make sure that you've got the the weighted bit facing down towards the lens and that the bar is exposed and it slides into this little recess you've got a recess on the back of the camera just down there and with that metal bar exposed it basically slides in like that i'm going to take the cap off first take the cap off yeah so it slides in and it actually it, you, you can't miss it because it slots in it slots into itself if it doesn't if it's not on properly it will be all wobbly and loose you can't go wrong with it and once that's pushed in to the camera housing like that so it's sitting flush you just simply push down on that same plastic um toggle bit i suppose you'd call it pull the metal bar up and then that's you with it attached and you're good to go um, so hopefully i've shown you that but i'll show you it again but to release it because now you can put as much weight on that as you like and that's not coming off so that's that's how it stays secure is by locking that back in with that plastic lug at the top and then when you want to release it you can see now it's actually quite a lot of tension on it so i'm shaking that and that's not coming off but grip the camera firmly and just pull that lug up and you'll hear it you'll hear the bar sliding up within the mount and then that allows you just to separate it okay, so let's do that again slow time now then so at the minute the metal bar has got the plastic cover over it because the the, uh, the little lug there the little toggle is down so to mount it onto the back of the camera first thing we're going to do is expose that metal bar by pulling on that toggle like that that now has fully exposed the metal bar so with the weight bit facing down towards the lens put your camera like that and just slot that in there and again like i said before you'll know when it's right because it doesn't really fit if it's not on properly it won't be sat in that recess properly once it's like that just grip it all together taking hold of this little plastic bit at the top the toggle at the top just push down on it and you'll hear the bar sliding down into the recess and then that allows you then to pull up on the little metal spreader bar and that's it fitted then that's not going anywhere all the, you can put as much tension on that as you like within reason obviously and that's it that's the camera mounted good to go that's how you put the back of the um camera together like that and then again if it's not in use just put the lens cap on and then you're good to rock and roll so you heard me talk about the weight bit on the back of the camera um so there's a little tiny housing and it's only soft it's silicon um which is a problem because i'll show you in a second but that's where your little weight selection that comes with now it comes with three different weights as you would imagine small medium and large now depending on your scenario so you might want to change the different weights depending if you're float fishing for example you might need a small one to weight the float properly or you might need a bigger one um, it all depends on what you're doing and how you're doing it um, if you're trolling you might not even want any weights at all or you might want a nice heavy one to get it down to get the right angle for your lure it all depends on the camera angles and depths and weight so it comes with a selection of them like that but for this one we're just going to use the small bit to attach the weight all you would do is just place it inside like that and then to get it out it's obviously just a case of poking it and shaking it however first floor i've seen and it is really the only sort of floor really um is mine broke quite quick so mine actually and i didn't i wasn't rough with it i was actually just putting a weight in and it popped apart so whether or not i've got a bad one or a bad batch or there was a bit of weakness in it i don't know um but my actual uh my weight housing has actually broken uh, so when i now put a weight on it i have to use a bit of black and nasty a bit of electrical tape just to tape it on it's no biggie it's just it's just annoying really it's just another step that i didn't need to use um but that, that is what it is but yeah you just pop that in there and then to change it you just literally take it out and put another one in and that's it good to go and like i said different weights change the depth and the angles of the camera so that's easy enough now coming on to the top this is where your memory card is uh housed inside of there so it's the end of the bullet as it was oh, it looks like a bullet it looks like a few things this camera but we'll go with bullet for pg-ness um in top of there is where your battery charging point is and it's a little usb charger which you also get with a camera in the in the pot i've actually taken mine out i didn't have it in the box when i showed you but it does come with a little usb charger um now to get it out i've attached a little bit of fishing line because without that fishing line it's a it's a pain 
to get that off because the O-rings, the seals on it, have to be so good because it's waterproof, clearly. This is what the, I think this is what the bar's for and that you jimmy it in there, but that's going to get lost in no time and that'll be gone, rusted or whatever. So what I've done is attached a bit of 80 pound fishing line on a little knot and a loop, just basically to give me like a, a ring pull, I suppose you'd say, just to be able to wiggle it. Do it gently, don't go crazy. And then that's what it looks like. So it's like the end of a bullet. So that's what it is. Two O-rings on there. Now when you're putting this on together, you need to actually push that right in and have it, have it so it's almost flush. You want a little tiny gap is what they say, just like that. So it's not quite all the way like bar, bar tight, uh, but like a millimetre, half a millimetre. And then again, like I said, that little bit of fishing line, little top tip, just allows you to pull it off. So if you've got cold, wet hands, or you've lost your bar, that's going to be really hard. So a bit of fishing line on there just makes it a bit easier. And then inside, let's let's take this off. Let's show you the inside without that on. So the inside, there you go. You can see there, that's what it looks like. So you've got your pause, your record button, um, and then you've got your on-off switch. And you've got two... Uh, two recesses up here. One's for a memory card, which I've got mine in. A little SD card from Argos uh, or Amazon. And again, I'll put a link in the description for you if you want one. Uh, take it or leave it, but it's there for you. A uh, little tiny micro SD card. Doesn't matter what size you've got, but obviously the bigger memory you've got, the more recording. It does say this has got a three and a half hour recording uh, capability. So big memory card. And then your top bit is for your USB. Now, the first uh, problem I encountered with this is I was pulling the air out trying to work out how how it was recording, and it should, when you turn it on, you get a, a sequence of flashing lights, and I'll do it now for you. So when you first turn it on, you get a sequence of green lights, and then it goes solid green on the outside. That says that the camera's on. And then to record it, and I won't do it now, but you push and hold the record button, and then you get another series of flashing lights to tell you that it's recording. And then you simply pop your cap on, and then away you go and you're recording. And then to get it to stop recording, you have to take the cap off, and hit the record button again and that stops it so it's nice and easy in terms of like user proof but the first problem i had was i put a memory card in and i wasn't getting the light sequence that it said in the instructions i.e the flashing green and then the solid green i was getting something different and i couldn't for the life of me work out what it was and it was because the sd card wasn't formatted to the camera so it wasn't accepting the sd card because it was a new one and it wasn't set up to this camera so to do that all you do is put the sd card in and you hold down the record button and then you get a series of flashing lights and that's what formats your SD card and then you're away and you're off and running and then you just go. So let's turn this off now. Turn it off again, you just hold the on and off button. Really simple. And it will flash a few times and then the light goes. And that's you really, that's the on and off, that's how you record, that's how you get the cap off, it's how you put the camera together and now we can talk about quickly the uses of the Waterwolf 2.0. So quickly coming on to uses and setups for this. Like I said, I've had this a little while now, but the weather just and, and my type of fishing that I have been doing, it's just been meant I haven't been able to use this or it's been so hectic that I just haven't put it out to fish with. We've had some good sessions this year, so sometimes when you get sucked into the moment, you don't think about the recording side of it. Uh, but like I said, under a float, when you're bassing with prawns or mullet or whatever, and you want to see your fresh water fishing, your perch intention, whatever it is you're doing, you know, if you want to know what them fish are feeding like, what they're feeding on, if they're rejecting your baits, or if a rig's working properly, this camera's going to tell you it. The clarity is really clear. You know, it's, it's brilliant. You can experiment with the um, distances away from your hook. So that's down to you as an individual to do. I'm not going to tell you how far it is because it will depend on the water murkiness and depths and stuff like that. But I've set mine sort of 30 centimetres away from the hook on my last two couple of goes, and it's been ideal. And the fish didn't even care, you know. Obviously, the red cap is not on there when you're recording. So it's jet black to a fish. I guess it just looks like there's just another thing floating around in the water. They didn't care when I was doing it, but, you know, different fish for horses for courses. So that's that. The other way you can do is when this is on and when you've got the back on and it's mounted. So let's do that now. Is you can set it up as an inline trolling camera. So you'd have this to your main line, your swivel, and then off the bottom bit here, I'll say this here can move freely. Once, once you've got that locked in place, as long as that lug's down, this metal bar moves freely. So you can push it in or out to tie your lines on. So push it down. You can have your bait directly off of that if you wanted to. You could even use the camera as the weight if you was only fishing shallow water or fresh water fishing. So on the bottom half where the lens is, that's where your lure or your bait goes. So you can imagine you've got your lure here now trolling along. That's going to be recording. 
Um, and obviously once you've got tension on it, that'll pull tight anyway, so it'll be from there. Um, but yeah, you can use your trolling camera along. You can see the action of your lure. So if you're testing out a new lure for a, perhaps a tackle company, or you're testing out different swivels, how they affect your lure, or if you're fishing direct, trolling, this is gonna be great for that. You can also fish it on a boom setup. So when I'm fishing my boom and sidewinder, all you've got to do is have your boom and halfway down your trace line, you just insert the camera. And again, 30 centimeters from that would be your lure and you fish it exactly the same and you just drag it up. And then you're going to get a nice shot of the pollock and bass, which is what I'm hoping to do with this as soon as this weather lets me get out there and do it. But you run the risk of banging it into the wreck is the only thing with that. So that's good. But outside of that, not just fishing, you can actually use it for checking out features. So if you've got a gravel bed on a lake, or perhaps a reef or a wreck um, or in a harbour, you know, you're trying to find a bit of equipment maybe, or perhaps you want to see if there's any fish lurking in a certain mark, you can just put this camera on without any bait or any lures on, and you can then stick this down there, troll it about, pull it about, lift it out, plonk it in, whatever you want to do with it, come back home, check the footage out, and you'll have a look at all the little features that you found, the fish, how your bait's performing, how your rig's performing. So for under quid, this can actually genuinely really enhance your fishing if you put it to smart use. It's not just for recording your fish, your marks as well. Intelligence gathering, let's call it my army background. Intelligence gathering, absolutely brilliant bit of kit. So to get your footage off the camera, um, there's probably a number of ways of doing it. I'm not particularly techie myself, so I Googled the easiest way to do it, and the first way I did it, it worked. So that's how I'm sticking with it. I've got a little USB-C reader, this is only a cheapie, it's not an Amazon own, I think it was, sorry, it's not an Apple own, it's just a little cheapie off Amazon. And again, I'll put a link in the description if you want it. And all you do, it takes various different memory cards um, and you stick it in a little slot. That goes in, this is uh, designed for an iPad because I use an iPad for my footage. But you can get ones with USB uh, ends and the rest of it. Uh, it's nice and easy. All you do is plug that in and it automatically pops up onto the iPad. You look in your files and your footage is there, good to go. And you can look at it, uh, you can delete it off the memory card from your iPad, so you haven't got to download it. Uh, and then all you do is just save it. Once it downloads onto your iPad, you save it to your photos, and then you're good to go with the footage. So yeah, a nice little, uh, far, I can't remember what they're, I think they're light, lightning cables or lightning connectors, something like that. But again, like I said, I'll put the link in the description. And then once you've done that, that's it, you're good to go again. You can clear the footage off the iPad or your laptop that way as well, once you've done what you need with it. And then your memory card is all clear, good to go. That's how you clear the memory card. And then that's you, good to go for your next session. So final thoughts then on the Waterwolf 2.0 camera. Uh, I really like it and I'm really looking forward to see what I can do with this. Like I said, I normally don't give a review of something until I've fully put it to use, but I've already seen how easy it is to use. I've already found the fault, the only real fault, um, other than having to attach a bit there, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so I can fully give a review on this and be confident to say that this is, for the money, a brilliant bit of kit that can enhance your fishing uh, in a number of ways that we've already discussed. Not just checking out your lures work, but also for checking out marks, reefs, under jetties, down on wrecks if, you, if you're careful enough, you know. So for 100 quid, 110 quid, absolutely brilliant and I highly recommend it. So if you want that, like I said, there is descriptions in the uh, video below. Other than that, go and get yourself a Waterwolf 2.0 have a play about and let me know how you get on with the footage. By all means, tag me, show me and share me and tag Water Wolf as well. They're always happy to receive your footage. Other than that, I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe. I've got numerous fishing videos on my channel and rod and tackle reviews. This one now as well. So I appreciate any support and I'll see you all again soon.